There used to be nine, not eight, unwritten cruise rules, things every cruiser understood were fundamental to making a cruise work and ensuring that everybody had a great time. They weren't written down in the terms and conditions until one of them, unfortunately, recently was. Nine suddenly became eight. And that's because cruisers didn't stick to that one really important unwritten rule. It so it became this formal written one. But importantly, along came penalties like disembarkation, $500 fines, and being banned from the cruise line for life. Welcome aboard, I'm Gary Bembridge, and I want to make sure others don't go that same way by ensuring that you know about the remaining eight unwritten cruise rules. First of all, what was that unwritten rule, you may be asking? It's a simple one. Be considerate. Children should be supervised. You should keep noise in the hallways to a minimum. Follow cues and treat crew and other passengers with respect. Simple stuff. It's sad that so many Carnival cruise passengers didn't follow this, so it became mandatory. Well, after that sobering note, I'd like to start with something a little bit more frivolous, but serious at the same time. Now, any cruiser knows that the guest laundry is a competitive sporting arena. It's not for the faint-hearted, but it's the best way, by the way, to hear the latest gossip going around the ship. Now, the written rules basically give you the opening and the closing times of that guest laundry, so you don't disturb others in cabins around them. But what they don't say is how the whole thing really works. Firstly, you do not hog the machines. You do one set of laundry per day, and you need to be back before the cycle is finished. You need to immediately remove it and put it into the dryer. If you're waiting in line and someone's washing is finished, you can take it out and put it in the dryer, but you do this at your own peril. Not everyone is thrilled by someone touching their washing. Break these rules, by the way, and it can get pretty hostile. A more serious bunch of these unwritten rules is around timekeeping. And there's three critical things to remember. First, being prompt when it comes to excursions, both for the meeting time and getting, getting back from any free time that you have on an excursion. Excursions always run based on the last or the slowest person. So if you're late before the excursion leaves, that time is cut from the overall trip. If you're late coming back from free time, that again reduces the amount of time you may have scheduled to have been somewhere else on that particular tour. It happened to me really frustrating on a recent trip when I was on an excursion to Florence and Pisa. It's a very long way from Laverna, the port, and people were really slowed getting back at each of the places we were given free time for, and it reduced the amount of time that we got to explore Florence by a whole hour. Do not be late. The other thing that is important with timekeeping is if you're on fixed dining and you're sharing a table with others, don't be late because they are sitting waiting for you. The waiters generally won't serve the rest of the table until everyone's seated, so you disrupt it again for everybody. The same rule applies to anything else that you may have booked that you decide you don't want to do. An excursion, a demonstration, a talk, anything like that. Just let people know. The next lot of unwritten rules focus on the buffet. There are some rules that the cruise lines have. For example, washing your hands, sanitizing, always using a new plate when you go to get more food. One of the most fundamental of the unwritten rules is about how you queue. There's no formal system at the buffet, and at busy times it can be pretty much a free-for-all but there always ends up being an informal flow developing. So the unspoken rule is you don't cut in and come from the other side. You just join those spontaneous lines and wait your turn. Another unwritten rule, by the way, is you don't pile up your plate. Remember, you can go back as many times as you want. Staking a claim to tables is also a big one, and not letting people join you is another one. The idea is you get your food, and then you find a table and sit down, and you let people join you if they wish. Talking about dining, there's also unwritten rules around the main dining room. One is that you can order as much as you want. Now, some lines are starting to push back a little on that and bring in a written rule, although at the moment I've mostly seen it in the speciality restaurants. For example, in Pinnacle Grill recently on Holland America, if I wanted multiple starters or something like that, they would charge extra for those. But in the main dining room, you can order multiple starters. You can order two main courses if you want. Now that's not publicized, but it's an unwritten rule and you'll find it's possible for most of the times. 
and on most lines. Also, another unwritten rule, by the way, is you can actually do a takeaway. So if you're a bit full and there's a dessert that you absolutely want, you can ask to take that away and have it later. There's also a whole other thing that goes on around the pool deck. Now, there is on many cruise lines a written rule and it varies. So on a recent cruise I was on, it was actually buried down in the daily program and it just basically said, please be respectful and don't hog the chairs. But on other cruise lines I've been on, there's been signs all around the pool area and the pool deck basically saying you can only leave your chair for a maximum of 30 minutes. Now what you find, although this is a rule, a written rule, everybody knows that crew members mostly don't enforce it, I guess, because it's too risky for them in terms of people getting upset. So there's also become this kind of unwritten rule that if you're going to leave your things unattended, you will not do it for more than 30 minutes because it's the right thing to do. Now, on the flip side, if you find a chair that has been reserved, but has been left for hours on end, and you're pretty sure the people aren't coming back anytime soon, you are, as part of this kind of set of unwritten rules, able to pack that stuff up and give it to the crew. Another important rule is around the crew, and any good cruiser understands that you do not treat crew badly. The crew are there for six to nine months at a time, working seven days a week, not necessarily for amazing pay. So the unwritten rule is that the more respect you give, the more you will get back. And if that doesn't work for you, there's an important unwritten rule, a thing to bear in mind. Understand that you should never be awful to someone who is alone with your toothbrush or prepares and brings your food and drink. So think about that one. Anyway, for example, I was recently on Queen Elizabeth. My cabin steward was looking after 15 cabins and he had a lot of work to do. But by making sure that I called him by his name, I got to know him, I found out about him, his situation, his likes, and even his family. And he started to give me so much more. He would do my cabin the minute I left in the morning or the minute I went for dinner. He gave me priority, it was really obvious. He made suggestions, he gave me tips. He was incredibly helpful. I knew that I got so much more from him by just investing a little bit of time and getting to know him. There was also another rule which is very controversial, but it's basically an unwritten rule that whether you like it or not, you should really follow whatever the tipping rule is. The crew rely heavily on the gratuity process, so just follow the set rule. One of the most important unwritten rules, for me anyway, is that you should always fill out the post-cruise survey and always call out the best people that you've come across by name and why and that you should also solve any problem before you get as far as a post-crew survey. Solve it when you're still on board. The crew rely heavily on those surveys. They need to get good scores to get rewarded, get incentives, promotions, and so on. So for example, I know some people who work as guest entertainers, and they're not in fear of, but they worry about those ratings because it will determine whether they get asked back or not. So it's true also full-time crew. Crew get promotions, they win employee of the month, the week, and so much more. It's a really big deal. Make sure you fill out that questionnaire and you call it everybody who did a great job by name. It's very important. Now, one of the most critical unwritten rules of cruising is this next one. Bear in mind that cruising is like a game of poker. Every single cruiser you ever talk to will always have a better cruise story, have had a better deal, or a better upgrade than you ever have. You can never win the argument. So the unwritten rule is just don't try and fight it. Just celebrate their apparent success, knowing that in reality, you've outdone them anyway. What unwritten rules have I left out? If you've got any, I'd love to hear them. But in the meantime, while you think about it, why not watch this video where I talk about seven things that smart cruisers do to make their cruise amazing. Starting with one thing that I learned that really transformed how I choose my cabin. See you over there.